Hello, and God bless you. I'm Cassandra Hill from Mount Sinai Deliverance Missionary Baptist Church in Chicago, Illinois, and I'm presenting today the Sunday School Lesson Overview for Sunday, January 10th, 2021. And this is lesson number six of the 2021 Winter Quarter from the Union Gospel Press Christian Life Series. I pray that uh, you have had a blessed week and I want to say a special hello to all the members and friends of Mount Sinai. Um, I know that this week was a little challenging, but I pray that you are able to keep your peace because as children of God, we do have the peace of God. And just quickly to remind us what uh, Isaiah 26 and verses 3 and 4 read, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. So we have the peace of God and we do have God's strength. He will give us his strength. So we keep our minds on him through daily prayer and reading of his word. And the Lord is faithful to keep his word with us today. Um, at this time, before we go into our lesson, we want to bow our head in a word of prayer because we always want the Lord to be with us in whatever we endeavor to do. So, Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we come to thank you. Thank you for another opportunity to study your word, Father. And we ask that as we go into our lesson today, Lord, that you would open up our understanding and that you would help us to receive what you would have for us to receive today. We ask that you would bless everyone that's viewing this video, Lord, in whatever area they have a need of, Lord. We know you're able to do it. And Father, we just thank you for it in advance. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you for it. Amen. 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 Now, uh, again, this is lesson number six. So we are um, quite a ways into our quarter. And so far this quarter, well, this whole quarter, we will be studying from the Gospel of John. This is written by the Apostle John, which was one of the close disciples of Jesus. He was considered one of the inner circle of Jesus' disciples. And the purpose of John's Gospel uh, was to show that Jesus is the Messiah, the only begotten Son of God and the Savior of the world. And last month, we studied the first chapter of John's gospel. And in the first chapter, we saw um, John the Baptist preaching the, the gospel or preaching repentance uh, in preparation for Jesus' earthly ministry. And, and we uh, saw that John testified of how he knew Jesus was the Messiah, and that was because God had given him a sign that the Holy Spirit would descend upon the Messiah and remain with him. And John witnessed that um, when Jesus came to John to be baptized. So that was John the Baptist's testimony. Um, then we uh, saw the beginning of Jesus' earthly ministry and the calling of his first uh, disciples, uh, namely Andrew, the, the brother of uh, Simon Peter, Simon Peter had an encounter with him, um, Philip and Nathaniel, which is also known as uh, Bartholomew. And then there was one unnamed disciple, which we believe was the writer of the um, John's Gospel, the Apostle John himself. Um, so last week's lesson, we studied the first uh, public min uh, miracle that Jesus performed, which was the turning of water to wine at the marriage in Cana. Uh, and the one major point that we received from last week's lesson is that that wine represented the blood of Jesus. And uh, when we look at St. Matthew chapter 26, verses 27 and 28, we see Jesus at the last supper, uh, the last Passover meal uh, with his disciples. And in verse 28, we saw Jesus um, telling disciples that the wine that was in that cup uh, is his blood that was shed for the remission of sin. So whereas at the wedding feast, the water pots was to contain water to be used for 
uh, outward or a ceremonial cleansing, Jesus was giving us this, his blood uh, is coming to clean us from the inside. So we see um, Jesus was uh, letting us know what was coming. Um, now, between the time of last week's lesson and today's lesson, Jesus has performed other miracles, uh, including at the beginning of this chapter, uh, the miracle of feeding of the 5,000 men plus women and children. So at this point, Jesus, um, uh, uh, we see Jesus' miraculous, miraculous works are, are, is gaining fame throughout the land. More people are beginning to know who Jesus is and the power that he has. And then that takes us to today's lesson, um, which is entitled, Jesus Walks on Water. And that lesson text uh, for today comes from John chapter 6, verse 15 through 21. Our related scriptures are Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33, Mark chapter 6, verse 54 through 51. Um, oh, excuse me. Maybe I have that. Let me double check that because uh, that's Mark 45, excuse me, Mark 45 through verse 51, and then Job um, 9, uh, 1 through 11. Now, the time is A.D. 29, and the place is the Sea of Galilee and Capernaum. The golden text reads, But he saith unto them, It is I, be not afraid. And that's taken from John chapter 6, verse 20. Today's aim is to understand the principles that undergird the narrative account of Jesus' miraculous walk on water. To be people who focus on God's word, go in the direction he sends us, and rely on Jesus' presence with us. To build our character through closer conformity to Jesus' character as it is communicated to us in our passage for this week. And our lesson outline is broken into three sections. Um, the first uh, covers verses 15 through 17. It is entitled, Leaving Without Jesus. The second section is entitled, Desperately Needing Jesus. And that covers verses 18 and 19. And then finally, Gladly Accepting Jesus covers verses 20 and 21. Our reading for John 6, verses 15 through 17 is, is as follows. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. And when even was now come, his disciples went down into the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea towards Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus was not come to them. Amen. So um, we see the setting here um, that, um, like I mentioned earlier, as the chapter begins, Jesus has fed um, the 5,000 men plus women and children. So this was a very high point, a very thrilling miracle. Um, people, you know, saw the power that Jesus had that he could take just a few fish and a few loaves and to feed that many people. And it was uh, something that it caught a lot of attention. Uh, and before we go into verse 15, where our lesson starts, I want to read verse 14 of that chapter. It kind of helps explain <laughs> what was happening in verse 15. So in uh, verse 14 reads, then, now this is right after the miracle had taken place. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, Is it of a truth that prophet that should come into the world? Amen. So, um, this is, they're, they're, they're quoting the um, text, uh, indicates that they are no doubt quoting um a prophecy of, of the coming of the Messiah that God told um, Moses 
in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 18 through 19. So one thing to note is that the men that were there, um, they were familiar with the scripture and they recognized Jesus. They recognized him as the Messiah. And this is kind of interesting because um, we don't have any indication that these are the, um, the, 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 the scribes or the Pharisees, the, the keepers of the religion or, or of the, 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 the law and the, the books, the religious um, uh, high uh, people of that time. Um, these are just regular people. And they were able to recognize Jesus, whereas some of the more educated and more knowledgeable of the word of the gospel, the, the book, uh, 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 they didn't uh, under, they didn't recognize Jesus in the scriptures, but these people did. Um, and then that takes us to, uh, to verse uh, uh, 15, uh, some of their actions, what they were thinking to do. But they thought that Jesus was a, a political and a military leader that was coming to, um, to get them out of the rulership uh, of the of the Roman government, so um, that's when verses fifteen uh, opens. It says, "When Jesus therefore for perceived that they would come and take him by force, <laughs> Amen, to make him a king, uh, he departed again into a mountain himself alone." So they were gonna make they were gonna take him by force. Amen. And they, it was kind of a, 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 we can't help but kind of, well, the first thing that came to my mind when I saw that taken by force was the uh, mob mentality uh, that they had their own agenda. Amen. And they were going to force this upon Jesus. Well, on the, on the positive side, like I said earlier, they did recognize him as the Messiah. Amen. So they probably had some good intentions laced in there. But the fact that they wanted to take Jesus by force, they didn't even ask him as Messiah, what is your will for us at this time? What should we do? Or, or, or are you ready to assume your kingship? They didn't even do that. They got caught up in this mob mentality that's the word keep coming to me uh, and with their fueled by their own agenda and the bible said they want to take jesus by force amen now we know that wasn't the right spirit amen amen and um our text uh reads it says there were two problems with their intentions jesus had not come to be the military leader they imagined and what he had come to do was not meant to be accomplished at that particular time. So Jesus left and went up um, a nearby mountain alone where the crowds would not follow him. Amen. So Jesus, their the, 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 um, their timing was off and then um, their purpose, Jesus' purpose was not their purpose. They didn't line their purpose up with Jesus. Amen. And we see that today. We can be guilty of that today. Amen. Not lining up with Jesus' will or not lining up with God's will, but having our own agenda and going about and trying to force things in life. And that's not what God wants us to do. Um, but also it's important to point out that in um, Matthew's and Mark's account, um, we also saw, saw Jesus sending the disciples away, amen, and telling them to go ahead to the other side, to Capernaum. Uh, and, and then he went to the mountain to pray. And I think that this is important because um, in uh, verse 16, it says, and when even was now come, his disciples went down into the sea. I think it's important to know that Jesus sent them away. And and you may question, you know, well, why did Jesus send them away? And he went one way and they went the other way. You know, what was going on? Why did Jesus? Well, um, from just doing some studying, um, one of the reasons may have been because he didn't want them to get mixed up with that mob and get mixed up with that thinking of making him a king. You know, we got to keep in mind that Jesus was preparing these men 
to carry the gospel to the whole world because Jesus was going to go back to the Father, amen, after the resurrection, amen. So Jesus wouldn't be with them always, uh, and he wouldn't be with them on the the great mission that they were going to have to do is to take the gospel to the world. So he didn't want them to get thrown off. He was They were still in training mode, and Jesus didn't want them to get caught up in the crowd. And I think, again, it's so important, uh, you know, not to get caught up in the crowd. And you can't help but see some parallels to what happened in our country this week. Amen. How people got caught up in the crowd. I heard a gentleman say that he didn't intend to get into into that. He didn't mean to do all that. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. But see, that's the thing. When you get in the crowd, sometimes things can change so fast. Amen. So it's good for us not to get caught up in things like that. Amen. Um, so Jesus took his disciples out of that area. He took, you all go. Because Jesus knew what they were thinking. And before they even, the crowd even got it out of their mouth, what they wanted to do, Jesus knew. So he sent his disciples away and then he handled the crowd. He dispersed them and then he went up in the mountain alone. Uh, now, there was no indication of how Jesus would meet back up with them. He sent them ahead. You go on. Um, but now, like I said, in verse 16, we see that it's evening now. It's getting dark. Uh, they're heading towards Capernaum, but Jesus had not joined them yet. Um, now, uh, 17 says, and entered into uh, a ship. So they were in the ship and, and went over the sea towards Capernaum. And it was now dark and Jesus was not come to them. So they were in the situation where they had had this great high point where they witnessed this miracle and Jesus was there and everything was great. But now it was getting dark and they were in the ship um, and they were in the water. The water was, was, was kind of pushing them out, you know, into the deep area and it was dark and Jesus wasn't there. Amen. So just kind of see how that felt that, you know, well, you know, this earlier, everything was great. Jesus was with us. We were all doing well, but now we out here in this dark by ourselves. Amen. And Jesus is not there. Where's Jesus? Amen. Uh, so this is what they were encountering. Now that takes us to the next section. Um, um, verse 18 and it reads, and the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rowed about five and 20 or 30 forlorns, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship and they were afraid. Amen. Now let's see what's going on here. Um, they were, like I said, they were in this boat. Jesus wasn't with them. And the, the, the boat is going out into the deep and it's dark. And now all of a sudden a storm is blowing up. Amen. And um, I was reading in our text here and it was saying how in that area, it was really not unusual for storms to blow up like that way. Amen. Because of the location. Um, it was saying that the Sea of Galilee is a small body of water about 700 feet below sea level. The high hills and mountains of what is today known as the Golan Heights uh, to the east of Galilee frequently engendered sudden violent storms when uh, east winds met with uh, warmer air over the sea. Uh, so that was the situation that it was quite common that it could happen. So they were and uh, saw themselves in the midst of a storm. And this was a violent, life-threatening storm. Amen. This wasn't something that they uh uh just just could handle uh easily, amen. Because the Bible says that uh they they were rowing against the sea. Uh, it was a great wind, and they were rowing and rowing, trying to 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 stay afloat, amen. And and uh and they were in the midst of this sea 
Can't you see them being tossed, amen, in the night, amen, in the dark, amen, with violent winds and water blowing in the ship? And they, they, the Bible says uh, in verse 19, they were afraid, amen. And now you have to keep in mind, these are men that were fishermen. They are well uh, um, acquainted with being on the water. But these men were afraid. So this was a serious situation going on here. This was uh, um, this was a serious thing. Um, and, 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 uh, and then we have to wonder, um, why then did Jesus, I said earlier, the uh, other accounts in Matthew and Mark, Jesus sent them ahead. He sent them ahead. Didn't Jesus know that this storm was coming up? Well, we know Jesus knows everything, amen, because he's God. He knows everything. God knows everything. So why did he send them? It seems like he was sending them into dangers. Why was that? Uh, well, we have an interesting reading here in this book. It says he was actually rescuing them from greater danger. The danger of being swept along by a fanatical crowd. Now, we had talked about this earlier, that this crowd wanted to take Jesus by force and make him a king. So Jesus felt that it was, according to our text here that we're reading, it makes sense. Jesus felt it was less dangerous for them to be on the sea than to get swept up in that crowd. We have to think about that. Think about that. It was more dangerous for them to get swept up in this fanatical crowd that was trying to make Jesus a king than for being out on the stormy sea. Amen. Think about that. That's real, that's saying something. That's saying how important it is for us to keep our minds right and not get entangled with dangerous thoughts. You know, that could be more dangerous than than physical harm to you to get your mind Twisted up with dangerous thoughts. Amen. Um, it says the crowd's determination to force Jesus into being their king was more threatening than we may realize. If adamantly resistant, they might have been ready to resort to violence to accomplish their purposes. So when you get things like that in your mind, it's not hard to see it going over to a violent situation. And again, I keep saying that it's it's amazing that we're having this lesson at this time when we saw a incident of what happened when a violent mob breaks out. It could be uh, endangering to your life, and we know that some people did were killed, amen, and and, and died in that situation at the U.S. Capitol this week. So. Uh, and our condolences, of course, goes to and our prayers to their families. Amen. Because those were human lives. Amen. So, um, but that answers that question of why would Jesus send them there, um, knowing that that was going to happen. Amen. Well, he this that was even less dangerous than being swept up in this crowd, and that's something to think about. That's that's really something to think about. Um, so the, the scripture said that they had rowed 20 or 30 furlongs, furlongs, amen, and that's about three or four miles. And in uh, Matthew's account, uh, they were in the about the, they were in the middle of the sea, and this was the fourth watch, which is between uh, 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. So this, they, they'd been on that boat for a while because remember, this uh, e uh, miracle took place during the day and people were out, you know, during the day. Now, this is three o'clock between three o'clock and six o'clock going into the next day. So this had been a long battle. They had been struggling with this, uh, this storm. And um, we could imagine that they were tired and they were terribly afraid and they were fighting for their lives. So this is the situation that they were in. And of course, we know that this is a storm in nature. It happened on the sea, but it parallels to the storms that, of life that we face. Sometimes we can be in storms in life, a sudden uh, sickness or a, 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 a financial situation can come and hit you from nowhere. 
And, and we call these things storms of life. Um, and our, our lessons uh, text says that we may relate this storm to the storms of life we all encounter. Any situation that arises beyond our control with no apparent resolution becomes a life storm for us. And I know that we can be familiar with these things. Like I say, it could be a sudden sickness of you or a family member, or it can be a loss of income. And all of a sudden you're trying to figure out how am I going to pay bills? And, you know, I know people are in the midst of this right now. We're dealing with this right now. Amen. Um, the text goes on to read, when we are in life storms, we often feel alone and forsaken by God. As we focus on the circumstances around us, there may appear to be no solution or escape. The result is great fear in our hearts. And just like they experienced great fear, they, of course, again, it was a natural situation. We can experience fear too. Um, when things go terribly wrong in our lives and we don't see the way out, we don't see how we're going to make it. Amen. Um, do we not sometimes find ourselves in frightening circumstances, even though we have been doing everything we can to be obedient to the Lord again? Now, um, they were doing what they were told to do. According to uh, Matthew and Mark, they were sent to go ahead. So they were being obedient. And sometimes in life, we're being obedient. We're doing the best we can. We're reading God's word. We're praying and we're living our lives according to the scripture. And it's not that we've done anything wrong. Amen. Uh, the book goes on to read, it's not always a matter of ch chastening when our life becomes difficult. Sometimes God is testing us in order to help us grow spiritually. We should always examine our hearts earnestly to see what he is doing. So that lets us know, don't, don't give up on God. Don't walk away from God. I think it's the worst thing you can do that when you encounter a storm in life that you walk away from God. That's when you run to God, amen. That's when you, you really pray and you really search the scriptures and you stand on God's word at that time. But I see so many Christians when difficulties come in life, they run away from God. They leave God. God is our only help. Amen. He's our only hope. Amen. And, and, and so many people are away from God now because they are hurt over something that has happened, a storm that's come up in their lives and they don't understand why it happened. Amen. And they have run away from God. But I just want to encourage you, if you in yet that situation, Come back to the Lord. Amen. He is your help. Amen. Amen. And um, reading further, it says, when we think of the storms of life that we encounter, we must realize that sometimes they have been caused by what we have done. And that's true sometimes. In those cases, we might need to make some things right in order to calm the storm. Sometimes, however, they come about without our ever being at fault. Sometimes it's our fault, sometimes it's not. Just as the disciples could not make progress against the wind, so we often seem stopped in our tracks from moving ahead in life. Jesus' appearance to the disciples reminds us that he is always aware of our needs. Amen. So we see, amen. That Jesus did make an appearance, didn't he? Amen. Amen. Uh, because um, the second part of verse 19, uh, it says, uh, after, you know, it says they would, they uh, rode about five and 20 or 30 forlorns. Uh, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship. And they were afraid. So they saw Jesus. Amen. Amen. And again, we have to we have to uh, look at the, the setting. 
They were tired and they had been battling the storm and they had been fighting for their lives. So when they suddenly saw Jesus walking on water, which is something that you don't do. Amen. You don't walk on water. Uh, you sink. When you, when you get in the water, you go down. But Jesus was on top of the water walking towards them. Just imagine. Amen. It's, it's dark. You're fighting for your life. You think you're about to die. These men thought this was a ghost or, or spirit coming to take them on away from here. Amen. That's what their mind was that they were so afraid and they were so frightened. Amen. But um, we're going to read on the next section and see what, what took place. Uh, verse number 20 says, but he said unto them, it is I be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship. And immediately the ship was at the land, whether they went. Amen. So we see that uh, uh, Jesus uh, is awesome. Amen. <laughs> because uh, he was able to walk on that water, but he calmed them down. Amen. He said, it is I, be not afraid. Uh, and then they willingly received him into the ship. Amen. So we saw that Jesus uh, uh Jesus' power over nature, amen, because uh, he was able to walk on that, that storm um, and um, he was able to come. And the other uh, passage of scripture says that when Jesus uh, walked on that water, that uh, the storm ceased, amen. So Jesus, the storm didn't stop him. Uh, and, and matter of fact, he stopped the storm, amen. <laughs> Uh, and, and so we saw Jesus' power over nature. We saw Jesus' protection of those that trusted in them, his, his beloved disciples. Jesus didn't let even the storm keep him from getting to them. Amen. Uh, he didn't. He, he he went to them and he came to their rescue. Amen. That should give us comfort. Amen. If we're going through something. Amen. Jesus, he sees and he's coming. Amen. Amen. Uh, we see Jesus' care and concern for his disciples. Um, he, how he, was, he comforted them. It's, it, don't be afraid. It's I. Amen. And Jesus don't want us to be afraid either. Amen. And we see the relief that he gave to them as he identified uh, himself. Amen. Um, they, the, the 21 said they willingly received him into the ship. Amen. They were calmed down. They were so relieved. Amen. That Jesus had come to their rescue. Amen. And the, the same way we can be uh, assured of the Lord um, coming to see about us. Amen. When we are in times of trouble. Amen. Amen. And, and I also want to say that we can stand on God's word during difficult times. I know it's, it's hard, just like, you know, it was hard for those disciples. They had to go through something. That wasn't an easy task. And I know many people are going through difficult things now, but we have to stand on God's word and find comfort in the word of God. Um, there were a couple of scriptures that had come to mind. I wanted to share um, um, quickly with you. Um, Oh, okay. Um, this is the first one is uh St. John chapter 16, verses 30, verse 33. It reads, These things have I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And again, that's St. John chapter 16 and verse 33, letting us know that. Uh, we will that there will be tribulations in life. Um, things will happen. Things will come. But we can be of good cheer because the Lord has overcome the world and he's on our side. Amen. He's fighting for us. Amen. And one of my very favorite scriptures is Isaiah uh, 41 and 10 that reads, fear thou not for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. 
That's a wonderful scripture there. It just lets us know we don't have to be afraid or dismayed. God will help us. You know, one thing I love about the scripture because it says, I will strengthen thee. And then he says, I will help thee. Amen. Sometimes we can be so weak. Amen. We can't even receive the help that God is sending our way. But this scripture lets us know he's going to strengthen us first. Amen. And then he's going to help us. Amen. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a loving Savior. Amen. And then there's another scripture. Um, 1 John uh, chapter 5. Now, this is not St. John. This is 1 John, a little further to the back of the Bible, close to Revelation. Uh, this is the fifth chapter and verses uh, 14 and 15. Uh, and it reads, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. This is such a wonderful scripture, the confidence building scripture, um, letting us know that um if we ask anything according to his will, now that's so important, you know, asking according to the will of God. You know, we can contrast that to those people in the, when our lesson started, that want to take Jesus by force. That wasn't the will of God. Amen. They were going against his will. Amen. But if the Bible says if we ask anything in his will, uh, um, according to his will, then he hears us and that we can have confidence of that. Well, somebody might say, well, what, how do I know what is in his will? Well, that's where you have to read the scripture. Amen. That's when I was talking about um, when we started our uh, video today, we we're talking about the peace of God. Amen. If we keep our minds on him and how we keep our mind on him is by the reading of his word and by prayer. Amen. Every day. So we got to get in God's word and we have to read his word and it gives us comfort and it gives a strength uh and when the storms of life come amen but we can see from today's lesson today that the lord is with us and he's more than able amen to bring us out of whatever is coming our way so that should give us some confidence um today amen um uh, now um again we said that the the, the, uh, the account in mark and uh Matthew, it has a little different, uh, 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 it, well, it gives a little bit more information that John, John is keeping it to, you know, what he needs to, to, uh, to, uh, to get across that again, like I say, he's, he's proven that Jesus is the Messiah. So he may not have all the details that some of the other gospels have, but, um, in Matthew's account, Peter also asked to walk on the sea and Peter walks on the sea. Amen. So we, 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 and we're familiar with that passage. So if you want to go um, in the book of Matthew, you can read um, about that. And um, in Matthew and Mark, it, like I said, it says that the winds uh, subsided when Jesus entered the boat. So he stopped the storm. <laughs> Amen. Uh, um, and in John, he, he says that they immediately arrived on shore. Amen. So in any case, Jesus handled the problem. Amen. The, whatever the problem was, Jesus brought it to an end. Amen. And got them to where they needed to be and, and took them out of that situation. Amen. And I know, you know, there's been times when I've gone through some things and I can look back on it now. Amen. Amen. But while I was in it, amen, it was, it was a challenge, but I can look back on it now and I know what a God is able to do. And no doubt you have had similar situations that you went through some storms in life. And while you were there, it was, it was difficult, but you can look back on it now and it builds your faith and it, it enables you to help build somebody else's faith to tell them what the Lord is able to do. Now, let me read this uh, last section here out of our text. It says, it is also helpful to remember that the miracle of walking on the water was never repeated. Jesus did it only once. This reminds us that he did not do miracles for show, but for what they can teach us about the nature of God and his love for us. 
So that's what we're getting out of these lessons. We're learning more about God. Um, his nature and, and, and his love for us. The fact that Jesus walked on water is an encouraging reminder that he can arrive to help us in any situation. And it, um, we saw that, how Jesus had power over even nature. Amen. Um, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And that's Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7. Amen. So this is so important that we pray. Amen. It's so important. And you know what? It's best to pray before the trouble comes. Amen. Amen. And you, you know, sometimes we wait to end trouble to pray, but you should pray every day. Amen. That's your communication with the Lord. And you know, when you get into a habit of praying, um, a lot of times the Lord will, the spirit of God will bring things to your remembrance. Amen. He'll bring things up for you to even study and point you and direct you to things in the scripture to, to study, to help build you up even more. So it's so important that we study God's word. And it's so important that we uh, spend time in daily prayer with the Lord. And again, it's not the, the amount of time. It's, you may say, well, I don't know what to say, but just come as you are. Yeah, amen. Just tell God what's on your heart today. First of all, we can thank him. Amen. When we get up in the morning, we can thank God for waking us up, allowing us to see another day. Um, the Bible tells us about entering into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise and being thankful unto him. So if you don't know anything else, thank God for waking you up. Thank God for you're not living outdoors. Thank God for whatever is going your way. Amen. Thank him for that. And when you start thanking God, other things will come. Amen. Uh, that, that you can pray. You can pray for our nation. Amen. We need it. Amen. Pray for our nation. Pray for our world. Amen. It's so much. Pray for the Lord will make you stronger and make you a good uh, witness for him in the life that you live. So there's plenty for us to pray about. Amen. We just have to um, just humble ourselves and, and, and take the time out to do it. Amen. Okay, now that leads us to our practical points. Amen. And practical point number one says, like Jesus, we must not give in to public pressure, but seek God's will and submit to that to it. And that comes from verse 15. The Lord's timing is always perfect. We can remember this when waiting on him. Verses 16 and 17. Number three, the difficulties we face in life will test us to see where we turn for help. Verse 18. Number four, we can look to Jesus for hope and courage as we face and endure the trials, excuse me, the various trials that come our way. Verses 19 and 20. And then number five, Jesus is available to us through our trials, but we must turn to him for help. Verse 21. Now, here are some questions that we can take for research and discussion. I always say that um, it never hurts to take another deeper dive and we can look at some of these questions and do a little bit more study and um, get a deeper revelation of our lesson. And then next week's lesson is entitled Jesus, the bread of life. The lesson text comes from John chapter 6, verses 25 through 40. Our related scriptures are John chapter 6, 41 through 52, and Matthew chapter 16, verse 1 through 4. I hope that you have enjoyed our lesson today, um, just seeing the miraculous power of the Lord how he even has power over nature. And if the Lord has power over nature, he certainly has power over any circumstance or situation that we may find ourselves in today. And we see that the Lord is more than willing and able to help us. Amen. We just have to know to turn to him in time of trouble. And, you know, I can't help but point out again the 
the relevancy of our lesson today with the t- uh, events that took place in our nation this week. And you, you it can't you can't say that this was a coincidence. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, God knew. God knows everything. Amen. He knew what was coming. And I believe he's using this lesson to, um, you know, alleviate some fears or, or, or calm some fears that maybe someone has had related to the events that took place this week. Um, you know, the Lord said to his disciples before he left, he said, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the ends of the world. And even in St. John uh, chapter 17, he not only prayed for the disciples that he was leaving in the world, but he prayed for those that would believe on him, those to come that would believe on him. And that includes me and you. So Jesus had us on his mind, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was about to um, be crucified. So the Lord cares. He does care about us. He is concerned about us. He did tell us that these tribulations and trials would come in life. And when we um, read the scripture and Jesus tell us, give us signs of the time, things that is going to come, he told us it's going to be some perilous time. So we just living in those times, but it's more important now than ever to get a good grip on Jesus. Amen. And let him get a good grip on you. And I say again, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, now is an excellent time to do it. Amen. The signs of the times are all around us. And when Jesus comes back again to get his church, you ought to want to be counted in that number. Amen. Amen. And even if he calls us individually before then, we know that after death is the judgment. We got to stand before the Lord. So we want to go before the Lord knowing that we have accepted Christ as our Savior and, and that we have eternal life. So if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, you should do it today. It's not a hard thing to do. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and he's the Savior of the world, you repent of your sins and accept him into your heart. Yeah, then you say, amen. And then you find you a good Bible teaching church, amen, that can teach you further of how to live for the Lord. And of course, when our church is open back up, you can be baptized. Um, and as an outward sign of the inward change that has taken place in your life. And if you have been born again, and maybe you're just not, maybe you've lost your way a little bit there, amen? Um, you can come back to Jesus, and I implore you to do it. Jesus is the only way, amen? And you, you, you've been born again, you know that. Amen. Some people are live. They they don't want to come to Jesus right now because they think they have more life to live or more things they want to do. I'm telling you, if you if it's anything you trying to do and you're trying to do it without the Lord, it's not the right thing to do. Amen. And you need to come to the Lord while you have a chance. Amen. Come back to God. I I encourage all those that have strayed away. Come back to the Lord. Amen. He's standing there with outstretched arms. He wants you to come back home. We remember the um, parable Jesus gave of the prodigal son that when he went away and he wasted all his father's money, um, yet and still his father had open arms for him when he came back home. And that's the way the Lord is. He's got open arms for you. He wants you to come back. Amen. Amen. And I want you to come back too. Amen. Amen. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Amen. And you have the lesson for next Sunday. Just told you a few minutes ago what that is. So I pray that you will study your lesson for next week and that you will join me again next time for Sunday School. God bless you.